I could not believe that they went there. I could feel it coming too, right? He says, every living thing is obsessed with the atomistic desire to pass on one seed. But you, Snake, the dude who has hit on every single female we've seen this entire game. Yes, you are different. <laughs> so good. I What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the State of the Arc podcast. My name is Mike. My name is Kaysen. This is episode three of our deep dive into Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Um, we played all the way to the end of disc one. I think this wraps up with the fight, the second fight with Sniper Wolf. Oh, the yeah. actually kill her. Um, so we're going to play up to that point, or we played up to that point for this week. Next time, my goal is to get roughly halfway through disc two and then in the final episode finish up disc two. I don't know exactly what point that is as of this moment but I'll put it in the pinned comments so look there to know where to play it to for next time. Also um, we would have announced this with the last episode which you're editing so you're going to be putting it in. We are voting on a new game on Patreon <laughs> so oh, yes. go there and vote. It's still open. We're keeping it open for two weeks. Cool. So go vote if you want to do that. Join our Patreon, support the channel. Uh, just check out the link and you can see what the reward tiers are and everything like that there. Don't want to get too bogged down on that because we have a lot to get through. Okay. All right, so um, we left off after defeating Cyborg Ninja, Gray Fox. Yep. Uh, he took off. Otacon has the, the optical sneak, camouflage the or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the camo, the... Invisibility poncho. Yes. <laughs> um, and Snake is now trying to find Meryl because she got seen by some enemies. Yes, like while she was um, messaging. What's the yeah. word again? It's on the, the codec. Thing. On the codec. Yep. While she was codecing. So we have to go she, find her. Oh, you can her. hear. They're like, there she is. And she's like running away. So we have to go find yeah. her. She's disguised as one of the enemy. But as Otacon said, she has a funny way of walking. And, she and that's how you're supposed find. to yeah, yeah. recognize her when you find her. Yes. She's not that far away. I think she's on like floor. There's like the main floor and then basement one and basement two. I think we're on basement two at this time. We go up to basement one. And then there's like a bigger room where there's like two other guys. And then she's in there, which is odd because there's usually only two guards on this level. So the third one is her. Hmm. You run up to her and she goes, Bling! but she doesn't attack you. She runs into the women's restroom. Yes. Because I think Otacon says something like, um, or, or th there's only one place where she'd, she'd be safe or something to that effect. There's only one place where we can be sure she's by herself. Where's that? Don't be so dense. And the snake tries to say like, what, what do you mean? And he's like, don't be dense. And what they mean by that, the hint they're trying to give you is, She's the only woman here, so she's going to go into the woman's, women's restroom. Not the only woman, but you know what I mean. Yes. Um, anyway, so she runs in there, and you go in after her, and then you have a scene here where you meet her in person for the first time. Yeah, I thought She that was sneaks great. up on you. Yep, she sneaks up, and she says that's the second time that she's yep. been able to compromise the, the great snake solid. The legendary solid snake. Yeah. Um, so he, he mentions this conversation is just overall kind of funny to me. I I <laughs> thought it was great. This is such a good. <laughs> this is so like typical. It's just very very typical. Yeah. He mentions it. that he didn't expect her to be as feminine as she is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. And she says it's not a time to hit on her. Besides, she's had psychotherapy yes. to destroy her interest in men. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Again, I, d I don't. I don't know. I, well, I honestly don't know the purpose of adding this detail <laughs> for her character because one, it didn't work, and I know. <laughs> it's like so ineffective that it just makes it even more stupid. Yes. Like because she doesn't. She acts like a non-military trained. Yes. Civilian woman. Yeah, she's not even close to seeming as though she's been trained in no. the way she presents herself and in the way she talks. And that's fine. If you want to make yes. the character that way, don't say that she had psychotherapy to destroy her interest in men. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it appears that none, it appears that none well, has happened. How would I put this? No, because that's not right. 
I was going to say that Snake is able to help her overcome her genetics, which is what <laughs> the, the theme, a theme of the whole thing. But psychotherapy doesn't change your genes. In fact, it's kind of... Yeah. If she had gene therapy that yeah, was supposed to have yeah, done yeah. that, that'd and be then, one thing, I guess. But, but the but genes aren't, you know, that could be thematic. Yeah, it's weird. It's really strange. It's really weird. And she's, like, obviously, like, right away taken with him and is kind of... Yeah. I mean, they meet, they literally meet right now. They go down the hall into yeah. Psycho Mantis's room where they fight him. And after that fight, he reads her mind and sees him there and that he's yeah, really yeah. special and yep. vice versa. They met 10 minutes ago. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst <laughs> psychotherapist ever. Ever, what, dude. Who, ever. Whoever that was. <laughs> ever. Ever. Or, or it's just like, um, what do you call it? Um, what's, what do they call it? Something therapy? Um, um, the, the therapy to get you to not be attracted to the people you're attracted to. What's it called? It's a thing that doesn't work. <laughs> it, that's my point. It doesn't freaking work. That's my whole point. Um, and so, but that's the thing. And then they just did it with her, but for the other way. And so they tried so to make her into that. And it's like, it just doesn't work. The psychotherapy doesn't work in general. And well, they, maybe actually, they tried it as an experiment and it's actually work. I do think psychotherapy doesn't work in general. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that's actually pretty good. There there's a few types of therapy that work well. One of them is like confronting the thing that you're afraid of. Oh, that's right? um, the, exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is is basically the only therapy that actually like <laughs> works. Um, other therapies are maybe cathartic in different ways. But yeah, generally speaking, psychotherapy doesn't work super well. But the um, the specific one for, so it's called conversion therapy. There it is, that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. You're, you're a thing, you want to be the other thing, so conversion therapy. Uh, and that's what's basically, I think it's like illegal in a lot of places, at least yeah, in the Western it world. Be. <laughs> uh, yes, um, no less because it doesn't work. Yes. Um, and right. it just kind of causes problems, but yeah, so she went through conversion therapy, and uh, within 10 <laughs> minutes, it was like undone, the whole thing, completely undone. It should have been gene therapy. Yeah. Yet, once again, it would have been undone, but at least it would have been thematic. Either that or we're meant to believe that Solid Snake's sex appeal is, like, supernaturally. <laughs> that is the idea. <laughs> what was it? The idea that even if you uh, are attracted one way, then, like, I'm so hot, they <laughs> all kind of, like, change your orientation. It's like, anyways, they're playing with weird stuff in this game. It's yeah, funny. It's, it's whack. Anyway. Also, she has a paint tattoo. Yeah, it's not It's not a real tattoo. I know, She's just, I know. I'm just a fan of Foxhound. I'm going to put a fake tattoo know, on but... for today. <laughs> I, it's like for a little, what? like my, my five-year-old likes fake tattoos. Right. Like, they're fun. They're cool. You I know, used to get fun. them at the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. You get yeah. some tattoos when you're, you know, younger. <laughs> she's in the military. She's yeah. out here in the middle of Alaska, and she's just got this, like, this... This pink, this little, um, little peel tattoo. Yeah, the little uh, of, water tattoo. And just like, foxhound. And it's a blue fox. Now the foxhound logo is uh, an orange fox. Oh, right? you're right. It might be a little different. Well, no, hers is blue though. Yeah. But the foxhound logo is orange, so she changed it to be blue, mm. for a strange reason. Somebody. But it's kind of a crazy logo. Yeah. Like the fox dude looks pretty funny, <laughs> and yeah. um, he's like shooting a bullet that's like curving around his body. And yeah. It's, like, there's a couple different ones. There's like there's the really cool one. Where it's kind of like, how do I, oh, whoops, Foxhound logo. <laughs> There's an actual Foxhound? Yeah. A Foxhound's a real thing. That is amazing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is like the old one. Oh, that's, that's the new pretty one. cool. This is the cool one. But neither of these are what she has. She has the oh, crazy okay. psycho. She has yeah. wait, this. this. That's one. what she's got. This one, yeah. Yeah, the crazy fox. Who, Where he's like got the gun. Yeah, and he's like shooting a bullet around. I'm around pretty him. sure that's the one that she has. Yeah. And, uh. I guess it's, I'm not going to say it's like super horrible, but it's really interesting that she has a fake tattoo of snakes. That, that's thing. a tattoo I would get. That's pretty cool. That's a cool The symbol. lightning bolt and the fox and all yeah, that. That's a cool symbol. Yeah, I don't that's know, pretty sweet. I don't know if they had come up with this one at the time Metal Gear Solid 1 came out. I think this was kind of the Foxhound logo from the Metal Gear. From the one early and ones? 2 and Metal Gear Solid. And yeah, then cool. this became a symbol in later games or something, but. Anyway. And you know in the PS1, you don't see it in all that great detail. It's basically just like yeah. a blue blob on her arm. And it's like, what's that on your arm? <laughs> oh, it's a paint tattoo. Yeah, it's kind of funny. She's a, she's a foxhound fangirl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talks about how yes. they were real but, heroes and stuff. You know, not, not just like the, the soldiers today. 
Yeah, and he's exactly. like, there's no such thing as heroes in war. All heroes are dead or in prison, or real heroes are dead or in prison. Uh, something about that. She tries to insist truth. that he is a hero, but you are, right? He keeps talking about how selfish he actually is. Like, I only fight for myself. I don't fight for the people. Right. He says he only feels alive when he's, like, in battle. <laughs> it's yeah. only when I'm cheating death on the battlefield the only time I feel truly alive. That's very cliche. But, but <laughs> It is so cliche. But um, <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's still cool. It's still cool. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just a uh, classic, you know. So she's upset by that. She asks why all great soldiers are the same, you know, the same way. Yeah. She has a whole, her whole deal or complex character struggle in this game is like trying to understand like what it means to be a true soldier and am I that or am I something else? Yes, and she's willing to put everyone's, the whole world at risk to find <laughs> out whether she has what it takes to be a true soldier or not, <laughs> which most people don't, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so he asks her why she didn't contact him earlier you know, after having escaped whatever predicament she was in where she got discovered. She says her codec is broken, or was broken. I don't know how that works. Wait, the codec inside is, her ear? Yes. But broken, now huh? it's working because you can... Wait, do you contact her ever again by codec after this? I actually don't think um, you do because she's with you pretty much the whole time. Yeah, she Except is. for when Does she gets she? captured. I actually can't remember. I don't but know. But we she, aren't. When she gets captured, we don't talk to her. Yeah, I don't She's think, uh, maybe out. it is broken permanently from this point on. Yeah. So the code, her codec's not working That's anymore. fascinating. I love how the codec shows you the faces, but yes. like, <laughs> you, you don't really see the faces, right? Uh, so she asks how he recognized her among the other soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> he says he never forgets a lady. Yes. And so she says, oh, so there's something you like about me. He says, yeah, you have a great butt. This dialogue is just... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, know. yes. For, for what it is, it's fun. It's it, fun. It's fun. But it's really silly. It's um, incredibly silly, yeah. Okay. This is how movies used to be, though. Yes. That's what's blowing my mind about it. I know. <laughs> it's remembering, like, oh, yeah, this was, like, normal yet at one time. I know. To it's, have it's in crazy. movies. That would never work today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she asks about how the negotiations are going with the American government and the terrorists. He says there's been no progress. Uh, he needs the key cards to stop the launch. She only has one. Mm. Uh, Kenneth Baker, the arms tech president, only gave her one. So there's two others and he doesn't have any idea where they are. Yeah. So it's like crap, like what do we do now? Um, so she asks to go with him for the rest of the mission. He, it's like, no, you're green, you froze up, like you're not ready for this. Yes. Right, she promises she's not going to slow him down. He then, asks, what yeah, if yeah. you do? And she says, then you can shoot me. And he says, I don't like to waste bullets. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That was a good line. I, I like, like that, that line That's a fun. lot. That's fun. I don't yeah, like yeah. to waste bullets. I don't, yeah, that's great. Um, <clears throat> so she says, she's, okay, I got it. I'll be careful. <laughs> and she moves over to the mirror. She looks at herself in the mirror. Yeah, she starts is, doing some reflection. This is classic, too. I don't wear makeup like other women do. I hardly ever look at myself in the mirror. I've always despised that kind of woman. I always dreamed of becoming a soldier, these sorts of things she's saying, right? She says that she was wrong. Uh, it wasn't really her dream. Her father had died on the battlefield. And Snake asks if she wants to follow in his footsteps, and she says not really. She just wanted to understand him better. So it was about trying to draw closer to her dead father. I can understand what this that, was all about. that part right there. Yeah. Last time I think we had talked about something about what little girl have you ever met that dreamed of being a soldier one day? And yeah. I guess if this is the reason, it makes a little more sense. Yeah, if it's a way to connect with your dead father. I could see people doing all sorts of things sure. that they would not normally do. Sure. Um, so now she's realized that she needs to take a good long look at herself and find out who she really is. There aren't, um, this is what you were talking about. I'm going to find, well, it was more of the conversation, their first conversation of her codec, where she's like, yeah. I need to know who I tr if I really have what it takes. Yes, and it's like, now, now, <laughs> right now, <laughs> right really? Now, here? Do you have to? Do you have to? Anyway, maybe. Uh, there are no heroes and heroines. He says to her, "If you lose your worm food," so he's just hammering the point. Like this isn't about this idealistic, true soldier dream or whatever you have in your head. Yeah. Like th this is serious stuff here. You're gonna die or you're not. Like, figure it out. Yeah. Um, so she, oh, he he sees a famas. 
uh, kind of in the corner that she yeah. had been. It's what all the kind of main soldiers have. Yeah. He's like, is that, you know, operational? She says it doesn't have any ammo, but he he's going to take that anyway. So you get that new gun. She's also got a Desert Eagle. Which is a very powerful yes. gun. Yes. And he's like, isn't that gun a little big for a girl? <laughs> she refuses to give it to him. I, I'm yeah. more comfortable with this. Than a bra. Because she's been yeah. handling weapons since she was like pre-puberty age, like eight yeah, years old yeah. or something like that, right? So I tell you what, for anybody, a 50 cal is, is a handgun. <laughs> if an is, eight-year-old is, is shooting a, very, a 50 cal? Oh, dude, that gun's flying back. <laughs> and the second it shoots... I you can look up pretty funny videos of yeah, people actually trying to fight shooting it. um yeah small framed individuals shooting a Desert Eagle 50 cal and basically the gun just comes right back and hits them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy. But yeah, it's difficult. You got to really have a handle and on the grip, you know. Yep. Um okay. But I so, love it that she's like I'm more comfortable with this than I am wearing a bra yeah. and she takes out the magazine and pulls a new magazine out from her bra <laughs> and then reloads the gun. And it's like, oh, geez, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> so now, and then once again, you know, uh, more hiding places than a man indeed. Oh, is right, what I put. right. Uh, that, because she had said that earlier. Yeah, That's right. yeah. Um, so she takes point here because she knows the base better than Snake does. She's yeah. kind of leading him up the hallway where you come, I think this is probably for me the most memorable moment of the whole game. And it's because of how- The office, the psychomantis part. Yes, yeah. fourth wall breaking, and yeah, sort yeah. of clever it all is. Yes. It's also, I mean like, that's why it's as memorable as it is, I think. I, I don't know if, I mean obviously it works because most people love this game and they love this part. So I'm not saying it doesn't work, it's just, it's just so crazy that it does work, I guess. Yeah. I can't, like, bring myself to understand, like, well, I can in a way because I, I can remember being that age. And had I played the game mm -hmm. at that age, this would have been, like, the coolest thing that you go talk to everybody oh, yes. about at school the next this day. This would be the moment. Like, dude, did you play this, this part? This would have been that Holy moment. Holy fetch. Like, yeah, yeah. he read my memory card. and <laughs> Yes. He knows what games I'm playing, right? Like... For that reason, I, I can see why it worked, but it's just yeah. it's just crazy within the context of the story that it does. But Psycho Mantis is like mind controlling her. Yeah. And you can I really like what they do with the sound here because you can hear the effect that he has on his voice from wearing the mask coming from her. So it's her voice, but with the but effect like of mask. the mask. That's cool. That's cool. I didn't know. So it's, it's it's how you can tell like he's speaking through her. You're right, you're right, because when she's like shouting and she's just like, make love to me, yeah. it's like, it sounds muffled. You're right, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't make that connection. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Come on, Mr. Foxhound, the commander is waiting. How do you like me? What the? Do you like me? Hold me, a snake. What's wrong? Oh, oh hurry, hurry, make love to me. It's the same, like, uh, uh, audio effect. Yeah. Because they take, at the end of this fight, he takes Mantis's mask off. In my lifetime, I have read the past, presents, and futures of thousands upon thousands of men and women. And each mind that I peered into was stuffed with the same single object of obsession. Yes. And you hear the difference between when it's on and off. That same effect, that same vocal effect is applied to her when she's talking to him while she's mind controlled. Really yeah, cool yeah. little sound detail there. Um, so she's like, do you like me? She's acting all crazy and her gun's <laughs> yeah. out like, make love to me, hurry. All uh -huh. this stuff. And he's like, whoa. And he sees Mantis kind of behind her. He's wearing like the optical uh, camouflage the suit. Invisibility suit, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have to like knock her yeah, out. Campbell, without killing Campbell her. tells he's like, "Hey, don't you don't know, actually use a weapon." Once <laughs> again, I'm asking a lot of you, but can you please not kill Meryl? Okay, so we just like throw her on the ground yep. over and over and over. Yep. just beat her up, knock her unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Which also probably wouldn't work in a game today. <laughs> yeah, that'd be rough. That'd be rough. It'd be rough. I, I think what was it? Detroit Become Human had some yeah. scenes that were similar to that in some way, and it was a big controversy. Yeah. So. Anywho, 
Yeah, so you'd, you'd be kicked Meryl's, you know, butt just completely. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Mantis actually shows up, and he's all upset that we were able yep. to, you know, kick him out of. And this is where we have, this is where that the dialogue happens. conversation happens. Yeah. Now, did you have memory cardly objects no. at the time? See, um, I didn't either. But I, I have want the full up, effect of this. I have looked up, and I've played it in the past, and I did at that time. I yeah, think. yeah. So... I looked up all the different ways in which he'll say different things here. So I kind of oh, okay. have it all listed out. Good, good, good. So um, <clears throat> Snake says, optic camouflage, huh? I hope that's not your only trick. And this kind mm-hmm. of like gets to Psycho Mantis. He's like, oh, yeah. you're doubting my powers, are you? Yeah. Let me show you. Let me you show you. And he does like the genie I thing. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he does this in a couple different ways. One, he reads like... I don't know how to describe the, the, the game dev term for this, but like your progress or how you've gone about playing the game. So how many deaths you have, how many times you've alerted guards, and how many yes, traps that's right, that's you've right. triggered. Or, yeah, yeah. So like those are the three ways in which he's, he's going to read first. Yeah. So if you've been, re- if you have had a really low number of alerts, He'll say, oh, you're a very, like, methodical man, right? Or if you have more, then it'll be like, you know, you're not very careful, are you, right, yeah. with, you know, alerting the guards. Um, then the second is how many times you've died in battle. If it's below a certain number, oh, you're a very adept warrior, or you're not a very good warrior. <laughs> sure, you? something like and that. And then, um, oh, you're very careful with traps. You're either something or you're a coward or something like that. And then the other was, oh, you're, you know, you're not very careful with traps or whatever. Right. So that's the first thing he does. That's like the first check. And they like, oh, you still don't believe me? Mm-hmm. Watch this. And then he'll read your memory card. Yeah. If you don't have anything on the memory card. He'll say, your memory is completely clean. Yes. Or if you say, don't. Ah, believe me now. If you and don't it's have like, any, It's like, yeah, it'll be like, what do you mean? Yeah, what are you it's talking about, It's actually dude? more clear in the Twin Snakes version because he says you have no, your game memory is clean. But that Instead gives away the trick, though. Clean. That gives away the trick. Uh, right. See, as a kid, you, yeah. you may not initially know how it knows yes. what it knows. Yes. Oh, it read my memory card. I wouldn't think of that until later. Right. Um, but it actually only reads Konami saved data. So from I've Konami heard that. games. I heard that, yeah. So the library at the time was still pretty small. This was in the West. Yeah, 98. In, so in Japan, there were a lot more games, yeah. Yes. So they, they, it, it, it goes off of games like Suikoden is Suikoden, huge. Yeah. Um, let me see if I got the full list here. I had heard in Japan, uh, Tokimeki Memorial yes. was a big one. That's a dating sim. Very popular Japanese game. Let me see the full list, because I didn't write all the Konami games, but there's there's one of them that I know, it's Vandal Hearts. It doesn't say, oh, you like Vandal Hearts, like he won't call out Vandal Hearts, yeah. but it will count towards the number of RPGs on your memory card, oh. and then he'll say, oh, you like RPG games. You love RPGs, yeah. If you have, like I think, two or more Konami mm. RPG saves. Was Castlevania one of them? Castlevania is one of them. Yeah. Um, so Castlevania, Suikoden, and there's like... Another one. Um, so Castlevania, Azure Dreams, Suikoden. Um, well, it was Castlevania Symphony of the Night specifically. That, yeah. And the, Vandal yes, Hearts. And then in Japan, Police Knots and Tokimeki Memorial. Tokimeki Memorial. Right. Yeah. Um, so those are the four games he'll call out like by name. Ooh, you like Vandal Hearts. They're not Vandal Hearts. Um, you like Symf- Castlevania. Oh, you like Azure Dreams. Oh, you like Suikoden, mm. right? And then if Vandal Hearts is also on the memory card and you've played Suikoden, that's at least two RPGs. Oh, and then he'll he... say, "Oh, you like RPG games, You're an don't RPG you?" RPG dude, yeah. Right. In the um, in the remake on the GameCube, because it's a GameCube game, not a PlayStation game. Um, he refers to Eternal Darkness. Oh, killer! Nice. Uh, Wind Waker. Good. Super Mario oh, nice. Sunshine and Smash Brothers. Made so it. not just Konami games, yeah. It's only Nintendo games. Yeah, actually. <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. It's like the opposite. Um, oh, also, I didn't mention this last time in the cutscene where you fight the cyborg ninja, Gray Fox. Oh yeah. And uh, Otacon's there in mm. the Twin Snakes remake. They have a Mario and Lu- and um, Yoshi plushy kind of like on the desk. Oh in really? The background. Oh yeah. cool. Also, in this room where you're fighting Psycho Mantis, you got Hideo Kojima's portrait. 
in the office. Oh, I didn't look into who that was. Oh, no way, sweet. In the portraits on the walls in the background. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyways, uh, that's, that's what he does to like read your memory card, right? And he's like, St- still want more kind of a thing, right? Yeah, Put your controller good. on the floor. Shh. I'll move it only with the power of my mind, right? And it's like you, the player, are supposed to put the controller on the ground. And yeah. this it initiates the rumble feature, which was, which was new pretty new at, at the time. time. Yeah, bzz, yeah. Bzz, you know, your bzz. controller. And so they will like move, move a little bit. And yeah. he'll go like, rock, and like move your controller. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, in the Twin Snakes version, the difference here is that they break the fourth wall even further with when, when Mantis says, put your controller on the floor, Snake looks at the camera and nods like, yeah, go ahead and do that. He's oh, like telling you the player, like, oh, okay. uh, yeah, it's okay, go ahead and, stop, go ahead and do stop it. Stop controlling <laughs> it, yeah, that's great. Um, hmm. Okay, so like after all that, he's like, okay, this demonstration's over, like we're gonna fight now. Anyway, uh, before we get into the fight itself, which is pretty cool, I think it's my favorite boss fight yeah. so far that we've played in the game. Yeah. Um, I don't know, how do you feel about how fourth wall breaking this is and um, as, as playing this as an adult for the first time? Yeah, I, it's, it's strange. Um, did, you, did you play this and go like, oh man, that's clever and fun and cool, or were you like, what the fetch? <laughs> I was confused. Games used to do this, though, because there's another part. You didn't mention the when the screen turns off. Oh, that's when you're fighting. Oh, that's yeah. during the fight, and yeah. then it says Hideo, Hideo instead, instead of video. Of video. <laughs> Yeah, that was just classic. Um, But yeah, um, I, because this is the first time the fourth wall's been broken in the game, right? Well, so you've played for more than an hour. Except for the parts where they call out to press select for this or that. Yeah, except for those things. But I mean, that's not that uncommon. But they do more fourth wall breaking later on in the game as well. But this is like the first big one. Because it's fun, I don't mind it at all. Yeah. Story-wise, it's like, what are you doing? Don't do not do this. And if we're analyzing the story, it's like, please don't. But, but if we're talking about how fun the game is, then this is a, a welcome addition yeah. to the game. And honestly, a lot of games could do with something like this because it's fun. If you're a game that rides the line between being serious and being funny or silly, then do this. This is a good way to yeah. do that. Uh, but if you're trying to tell a good story, this will destroy your story. <laughs> like, it will seriously get in the way of the seriousness that you want to put in if you're telling a serious story. Usually it would, and for some reason here, I've never felt that way about this encounter. I wonder why. There's a boss in Metal Gear Solid 3, which is my favorite of the series. I like Metal Gear Solid 3 way better than this game. I think a lot of people Like way better than this game. Um, And that's, I'll talk about this probably later, but it's primarily because I don't love how this game controls and feels oh, to play gotcha, and yeah, fighting sure. in it. It's just, sure, sure. it's not a game that feels tight to me. Yeah. Um, and uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 to me is like the perfect Metal Gear gameplay wise. But there's a boss in that game who I won't mention to not spoil it for people, who is who breaks this barrier of being like way beyond what I can tolerate in for terms of it wall. being serious or you know serious or silly or whatever, um, yeah. way more than this. Uh, but this one, it, it's it's just super unique. Like my thought as I was playing it this time is, you know, this is the kind of thing, like. There's nothing like this that I've seen it, it, that is just so unique to Metal Gear, I guess. Yeah. There was this attempt being made by the developers to do something with this game that was that you would not expect. Yeah. And that's the, this is the kind of scene that like really demonstrates that out of the box type of thinking of, uh, about the approach to development of the game. And to me, it's like so charming and endearing a thing that it completely like makes up for any like dissonance that it might create story-wise. Well, and, and the other weird part you. of it to me is that this game I think was rated M. Oh, was it? I think so. Let me check that to make sure that I'm right. Because of violence? Yeah, there's a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll bet you it was rated M because of a thing that happens later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's rated M right there on the disc. Wow. 
So the game was rated M, right? But the thing that, in my experience, particularly in this time, like that didn't, parents weren't really very knowledgeable about this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of kids mm -hmm. much younger than 17 that I think were playing this I think game. most of the people who played this <laughs> were younger than 17. Yeah. And so this would have, this is, like I said, was the kind of thing that would have just been like mind-blowingly cool. Mm. To like go talk about on the playground at school. Yes, like, absolutely. Holy cow! Did yes. you did you because you would have gotten different things than your friends did, you know? Because maybe I had Suikoden, but you had Castlevania or yes. something like that, right? So you would have gotten different answers, and you would have been like, "Oh man, what about this? What what are all the ways?" Because we didn't have the internet in the same oh, way. Oh yeah, back exactly. Then. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. you're not just going to look up how what are all the things on YouTube that Psycho Mantis yes. says. Yeah, yeah. You have to like figure that out by playing it and experimenting with it yeah. and talking with your buddies who maybe went a different direction or whatever, right? That's how you figured out secrets back then. And that this is the kind of conversation that would really would have like sparked a lot of excitement. Yes, for in sure. that way. For sure. So I that totally it's, agree. It's almost like a marketing thing. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Where it's almost, like, yeah, if you we think put that this way. in there, it's like there's secrets yeah. and there's different ways to um, have the scene play out a little differently. You're going to go talk about that to your friends and then one of your other friends who doesn't have Metal Gear is going to be like, what? What's this game? Like, yeah, That sounds yeah. crazy. I want that. You go ask their parents to buy it for them too. So, I don't know. I think it's pretty brilliant, like all of that considered. Ga game wise, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I do agree. Story wise, I just I don't know if I can go there. But like, think of any other type of story, other than you know what plays break the fourth wall all the time. That's but true. That's their more personal. You know. Yeah. Um, think of a book that breaks the fourth wall, or you know, think of, I don't know. <laughs> I just think that is, if you're, is um, in telling a story, a fourth wall break is not optimal. It's a long time since I've read. Um, Oh, what's the freaking book called? They made a movie out of it. Uh, something Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, A Hitchhiker's Guide? A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, I've watched that movie. It's yeah. been forever. I haven't seen the movie, but it's been okay. forever since I read that novel. But I seem yeah. to recall them doing that a They lot did that? In the book. They would But have. maybe they I'm would, thinking of they? something else, actually. <laughs> no, no, it's possible. It, That's it was the kind of around, story that would. It's around that time that I was reading just a ton of science fiction. And so I don't remember which ones did which thing because it's been like 10 years now or something, but. Yeah. Anyway. Would you consider Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy to be a good story? Yeah, actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, a fun, a really, you know, really I fun I know, way. but that's kind of what I mean. Yes. Um, so maybe I'm being a little too harsh. I don't want to say that this doesn't belong in the game. It does. It's very good. It makes the game very fun. It just does this much for the story. Yes. And for, yeah, anything. I agree with that. Yeah. But did you like it? Or were I you personally, totally confused? I personally loved it, and I wouldn't mind if the entire <laughs> game was like this. I, I was confused at first. I was like, is he talking to me? <laughs> oh, he's totally talking to me. Oh, yeah, yeah games used to do this. That was my yeah, thought. Right. Um, and I freaking loved it. But in terms of analyzing the story, I'm just like, okay, pretend that didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> right? right. They kind of have to do that. Otherwise, it's like, are we official characters in the world of this game now, and how do mm. we analyze it accordingly? Yeah. You just can't do it. You just got to throw it away as a... Um, a joke. Well, it goes even further as you get into the fight itself. I know, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can't touch him if your controller is plugged into port one, which is what you would typically do because that's right. player one. <laughs> but you have to like try to hit him and then talk to your <clears throat> your people on the codec for them to realize, oh, he's like reading your future because yeah. he can read all the inputs in controller one. So you right. have to switch the port to port two, and he can't read your inputs on that. Yeah, yeah. So switch the controller to port two, That's so and smart. then you can attack him. It's really it's smart. It's clever. It's very smart. It's ex ex I mean, it it's, it's shatters. It, yeah, yeah. it obliterates the fourth wall. Right. But Pretty it's heavy. really clever, too. Yes. <laughs> I and, think so. They kind of thought of, they pulled out all the stops here. And that's the kind of thing that I think, despite the fact that it's a rated M game, which is mm -hmm. why I wanted to bring it up, Because I it's not still for feel kids. like yeah, yeah. he's talking to kids with this. To 10 and I feel kids. like he still knows <laughs> that somehow. Like he still knows, it's rated M, 10 year olds are going to play this anyways. Right. I, I'm speculating on that, but I have a feeling that that's the case because I mean, of course, 18 year olds and older, we're going to be playing it too, right? Right. But I don't know. It's just like, 
Was uh, GoldenEye rated M? It probably was, right? Probably. Pretty sure it was. Probably. My parents bought that, and My then they were horrified yeah, yeah. when they saw it, because <laughs> they didn't know what that symbol meant. They said, oh, yeah. GoldenEye, this is popular, buy it. <laughs> I feel like most parents were probably that way. I know. My uh, yeah, my parents would not let us have Goldeneye, and that came out around the same time as this game. But yeah, anyway. same same. Oh, was Goldeneye ninety seven? Ninety seven. Yeah, and then ninety eight yeah, yeah. was Metal Gear. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. This is the same year as Zelda, I think, which also had blood, but only in one scene. And, and then, then they, they took, took it out. out. <laughs> yeah, they took it out for subsequent <laughs> releases. And they took oh, it out, man. but we have the one with the red blood, the real yep, version. Yep, we have the, the golden cartridge. <clears throat> Heck yes. Um, okay. Anyways, yeah, I like this fight a lot. It's fun. Um, it's great. <clears throat> and then the end, he's got this big uh, monologue, this big well, soliloquy. He takes control over her again, and you gotta, you like, gotta beat her up again. Beat her up again. Because <laughs> um, he's like, yeah. he's, he's I'm gonna have her she's kill herself. Functional. Yeah, she was gonna shoot herself. And you like, <laughs> like knock her out. <laughs> like multiple to times. To stop her. I can't believe she's functional after this. I know. Yeah. It's like messed up. Yeah, it's pretty jacked. Um, yeah, so we ruin him there. Ah, uh, yeah. So, crazy. yeah, his monologue, right? He goes on here. Um, so, Naomi... This, this monologue is great. On the, ...on the codec asks Snake after the battle why he went so far out of his way to save Meryl. And he's like, I don't want to see anybody die. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, since when did anybody's death bother you so much? Like, really harsh thing to say all of a sudden out of the blue. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and then Campbell tries to defend him. He's like, he's killed a lot of people, but he's not, he's, he's not <laughs> heartless. Like... Come on, <laughs> right. and, and she and he kind of dismisses that. Like, no, she's right. Like, don't worry about it, Cam. We have to defend me, kind of a thing. Yeah, um, there's an important thing. So, this conversation, there's multiple conversations throughout this part, um, where it seems as though Naomi is acting out of jealousy. Mm. She's super jelly I, because I, that's we were talking to her right. and we were like, hey. We want to get with you later, and yeah. then now we meet all these other girls. Like That's I think true. we skipped over her, who was the um, the communications um, Mei, Ling. Mei Ling, and then oh, we want to get with her. Uh, Nastasha, I don't remember. I guess she not. You really. can actually go through the whole game never contacting her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that that's up to however you want to do yeah. it. But then Meryl and we're you know talking about her butt and all this stuff, and Naomi's <laughs> just like, okay, like what's your deal? She's getting a little jealous, right? Yeah. But. I will submit to you that there may be more going on. Well, I think that's with true Naomi than than you'd realize um, until later in the game. Like later in the jail cell, I think she's trying like so hard. I even put a note on this, like to get him to admit that Meryl is like someone special to him. <laughs> yes, she's like pushing him. Oh, to say dude, it. <laughs> there's some funny, there's some funny dialogue so, there. I yeah. can't wait to get. Anyways, to that I think one. you're right about that. But. Yeah, there may be something else, but it seems at the moment that she's just pure jealous. Yeah. So as Mantis is dying, he's like lamenting the fact that he couldn't read Snake's future because you changed the controller. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How could um, he have foreseen? And Snake says, a strong man doesn't need to read the future. He makes his own. Nice. Badass. Yeah. Hard, hard ass line. Yeah. Um, so then he kind of goes on this um, well, he gives he you information. His, his like, life this story. is where you need to go. Yeah, the, the, the bad guys you. are actually pretty helpful in this yes. game. When we defeat a bad guy, they have some respect for us, and they can yes. give us what this we... Is like, this is like the foxhound code yeah, of, yeah. like, warrior like, uh, oh, yes. morality. <laughs> you, yeah, the morality is if you can beat me, then you're. it's a moral code. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love it. And, I mean, that's been the same since you fight, like, the Gray Fox in Metal Gear 2 and Big Boss in Metal Gear 1. It's like the same thing every time. That's funny. Um, yeah, and then and then he starts going into kind of his sad backstory. Yep. I, I don't know how you, how you feel about this because this is kind of like a general. It's it's a trope, but it's it's used all the time here. Um, it's like on. I think we've talked about this in another podcast. I can't remember which yeah. one it was. On death's doorstep, the bad guy then explains. The sad backstory where you're supposed to be able to like yeah, um, yeah. understand their point of view yes. and like sympathize with them, it's but only like, when they're about to die. Right, because, <laughs> yeah, well, there's reasons for that, but you have to die because yes. there is no forgiveness. <laughs> so if you were bad and you did bad things, then you have to die. So there is no getting past that. Uh, but there is the idea of 
like if 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 you're if your char- if the character's dying and this is when you're going to make them feel bad and then the character dies, it kind of says that you didn't really do enough. Yeah. In the to make story, that person a character. Yeah, try try your best to do that well ahead of this moment. Yes. If you wait until the very end to be like, oh, now we got to throw in some something, some moralizing or some like backstory here at the very end now, so that people will understand. It's it is cliche. Movies do this all the time. Yeah. I don't think it's very effective. I don't. Like I don't. It. Yeah. I don't think it's very good. Uh, but it's a very common thing to do, and it just hints that you know what. It's almost like you wrote yourself into a corner, and then you're like, oh, but I want to inject some thematic material into my story. Where do I put it? Oh, the guy dies. Well, I'll just have him say stuff before he dies, and then you can put your the theme of your game. You can fit it into that moment. It's just kind of a, a cheap way to do it. Yeah. Uh, the, the idea, though, that he'd be forthcoming before we basically defeat him is difficult, um, but you can have it happen in other ways. Yeah. Like, he's not just going to tell us all this stuff ahead of time. He'll, he only does it because he respects us now. Right. I get that. Um, but it is um, very typical for the bad guy to begin explaining to us in this way right at the end of the game. And, oh, now we feel bad for him. Now we're crying. But But that's the thing is it's not effective. Like, it doesn't actually make me feel that way. It's supposed to. Like, his line um, where he says, uh, uh, you're just like the boss. No, you're worse or, like, something like that. Compared to you, I'm not so bad. What Mm. they're trying to get across is Snake is actually, the guy you're controlling is actually... um, Question, more questionable than even the villains he's fighting. Yeah. But I don't feel that at all. No, I don't like, either. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't just tell me that on right. death's doorstep when the guy's dying yeah. and like tell me his sad backstory. You've got to like make me understand that character through the course of the game, and then when you confront them, you understand that you don't have to have this monologue. Which I don't know. Like when you're dying, <laughs> you're like bleeding out. You're not just going to yeah, sit there and like and just like well, spit out your life The idea is story. that when you die, your life flashes before your eyes. So this is showing that happening. He's reliving his life. Now that he's going to die, he's reliving his life. You can do that in a book a lot easier. Sure. I think I think that might be where the problem is. So you're in a book, you can explain this kind of stuff. Whereas in a in a game, he has to say it. He has to actually say it. You can't just put the knowledge in via a narrator or something. Mm. He's got to start talking, and. Basically, all the characters do this. <laughs> in this entire game. All the characters have a lot of things to tell us as, as, as they're dying. They're dying, this and there is, are a lot of bad guys. So it's like, yeah. okay, you could make that argument that, oh, how do how does a story stay interesting while introducing you to the backstories of all seven bad guys, you know, and mm-hmm. then and then you kill them and we don't have to worry about it. That is a tall order. That's a difficult thing to do. Um, but otherwise, you're just doing it like this. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't say that this is better. It, this is used <laughs> way to an even way worse effect in the Assassin's Creed series. Oh, it's really? like every time you assassinate one of like the main kind of like yeah. villain characters, they just. It's almost like a talk. five to ten minute scene yeah. of them like explaining why they did everything and like, see, you're really no better than me. Uh. Yeah, and, <laughs> it's and just he like, listens. Uh, there's got to be a better way than this. I but. agree. I agree. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a huge fan of when somebody dies, and then you find out that they were good, <laughs> and then it's like, okay. Not that Mantis was good, know. but like... Well, clearly not. You, he, was, he was pretty bad. You're, you're meant to have... I think you're meant to feel some sympathy for him. Because, okay, his story is his mother died in childbirth. Yeah, and his, his father dad resented hates him, him for it. because of that. So the first time he ever dove into someone's mind, it was his father's mind. And all he saw, there was hatred for him. Yes. Um, so, you know, he, he, ha- he was abused as a kid, at least in some way, if at not physically, then neglected verbally, or, or neglected, or hated, or yeah. whatever. Didn't, didn't receive the love that a child needs. Get it. Uh, this caused him to seek kind of vengeance on the world sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, so right? he like so killed everyone in the whole village. He like right? burned his whole village down. Yeah, he kills everybody. Um, oh, and before that, he, he had a funny thing we were talking I did, about last time. I did, and I can't this. wait to say it. <laughs> so, he says he's read thousands of people's minds. Yeah. In every case, the people disgusted him because yes. of their ceaseless, Atomistic. endless drive to procreate and pass yes. their DNA. Right. Yeah. And he says to Snake, but you're different. I've laughed so freaking hard. 
I can't believe. I could not believe that they went there. I could feel it coming too. Right? He says, every living thing is obsessed with the atomistic desire to pass on one seed. But you, Snake, the dude who has hit on every single female we've seen this entire game. Yes, you are different. <laughs> so good. I was like, I, okay, so you know we talked about the difference between, oh, it's corny due to lack of yes. awareness. Like yes. It's, this, this is I, a lack of awareness. This is lack of awareness. It feels that way. It feels like lack of awareness. Yes. Yeah, and I just couldn't believe it. Now, I know uh, people who, I, you know, you play the game and maybe it's as though Snake talks the talk but doesn't walk actually the walk, want right? it he talks all he lives about the girls alone with his 50 huskies, with his 50 huskies in Alaska. <laughs> who need me yeah so <laughs> he 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 likes to talk to the girls but he doesn't actually really like pursue a relationship consummate <laughs> or yeah. like so, actually have any kind of real connection with them yes yeah. and so it's possible that despite what we the characters at this point in the game know about snake via what he says to women and how he tr seems to treat them and how he talks to them very james bond like it is a pure lack of awareness of at least what the the player's knowledge of snake at this point yeah or maybe right. I, I could see the um, intent behind this line to be what we said. You are different in that you, you don't seek to actually procreate. Like you're not trying uh, to have kids. You're not trying to have a family. You just want to, Like, know. and if that's the case, right. a different line probably would have been better there than Yes, absolutely. This. But because they're kind of vague. When yes. they say the atomistic desire to pass on one seed. If you're talking like, about, okay, does, does that mean having a family? Exactly. Or does that mean I just want to go like bang as many chicks as I can? Because he's talking about the desire. Exactly. What is the desire here? Is the desire, I think he's talking about, you know. <laughs> That's what I sex. thought too. But, but it could be that he's referring to the genetic, the selfish gene, right? Sure. He's reading into people and the, the genes that want to pass on themselves forever and that that's what he's getting at. It could be something like that. Yeah. But it sure seemed well, not, because he talked about it disgusts me, you know? Like, yeah. Okay, I think he's talking about sex. Because I have had some conversations um, with people who say like, I don't want to have kids. Like particularly some women I know. I don't want to sure. go through childbirth. I don't want to have kids. Right. But I want to pass on my family legacy. That, like this, this conflict that this, to me was, I don't know, I've never thought twice about like, do I want to continue my family's legacy? Yeah, I have that's never, kind of funny. That's I have kind of funny. never ever thought to myself like, yeah. I need to like pass on my family's legacy. You know, but to some people that's really important. It's like, it's important enough for them to have real conflict within themselves yeah. about this issue. And maybe that's what Psycho Mantis is referring to Snake not maybe. having. Maybe. Well, I, clearly, my I best think guess. Snake doesn't care much to pass on his genes. Sure, right? sure. And we learn more about what that means later. But he doesn't seem to care much about passing it on. And he doesn't have a family legacy. He doesn't know much about yes. family. Or he knows that, that right? his dad was big boss, and that's about it. So the, the, the idea, this is, I don't know, it's, it's like built into your psychology. It's just sure. built in that, like, you have something important, and you need it to continue, right? And that is the selfish gene if you think about it. But like your genetics come from an unbroken line yeah. of of organisms going back like three or four billion years, going yeah. all the way back to that point. And the gene the genes, the, the right organisms needed to live or die at the right times like one in a trillion chance that you even exist, you know, yeah. all the way down to this point, boom, all the way to you. And it's a rough thing to be like, it ends now, you know, to be like <laughs> it, all this genes, all of these animals, all these organisms going through all the suffering and everything that happened and all the one in a million chances that you even possibly exist. And you're just like, not going to continue it, you know? Mm. And it's like, there, there's something there. There's something weird there that I think is totally subconscious. Mm. Of course, the idea that beings even existed billions of years ago is not subconscious. That's just an idea of science. But knowing the science makes it even more so. Yeah. Like, and, and then to think that your genes should end here and that you have a say in whether they continue and you'd make the decision not to continue 
there's something about that that's like you're fighting against nature. You are fighting against nature. Nature has been going for billions of years. And the, deci- the decision, there's going to be some dissonance, some severe dissonance in your mind of like, you know, this, this <laughs> lineage that's gone on for three billion years ends today. It's like kind of, it just sounds kind of crazy. In some way, yeah, in some I in could, some weird maybe way, that's it's like ooh dissonance. Ah, are you sure? So now all you're doing is basically proving why psychomantis shouldn't be disgusted. Like, what's his problem? <laughs> I know. Why is he disgusted? It? Except that's why I think if it's. I think it's just. If that's what the, he's referring to, the act. If it, yes. unless we're just talking about everyone's drive, everyone's sex drive, disgusted. And I, that I, makes I more so. sense. Yeah. And that's how I read it when I first played it, and the second time I played it. And it, that's why it's funny yes. that he says to Snake, you're different, because he's, he's so not different. different in that sense. Yeah, and you're, we're trying to explore ways <laughs> that Snake could be different, because it can't be that way. It can't be that. <laughs> Unless the pure lack of awareness from the creators of this game. Anyway. Yeah, I loved it. I laughed out loud. I don't think I've laughed that hard, out loud, <laughs> that loudly and that hard in a video game. <laughs> In years, many, yeah. many years. It has been a very long time. That was the funniest thing I'd heard, and it was purely due to the lack of awareness, what I take to be lack of awareness. Yeah. yeah. Um, he goes on to say that he joined Liquid's lev- revolution not because he cared about oh, right. what they were fighting for, but because he just wanted an excuse to kill as many people as he could. Right. Um, he tell- Then that's when he says, you know, you're just like the boss, Liquid. Um, no, you're worse. Compared to you, I'm not so bad. Which is crazy, because the guy just admitted he just wanted to kill people. Yeah. Everyone he put, any excuse he had to kill people. He's trying to say Snake is worse than him. I'm not sure what he's seeing there, because Snake just oh. told Naomi, I don't mm. want to see someone die in front of me, and right. he just went out of his way to save Meryl. Yeah. So what is he talking about? Yeah, this it's is not a, working. This is a little this confusing. This is not working for me. This is a little He's confusing. He's not convincing me yes, <laughs> at all that he not. can read anyone's mind effectively. Absolutely, um, I agree. Okay, so then... Oh he, yeah, then they take off his mask. Yeah, his mask comes so off. So they remove his mask. Yes, you were telling me about and, this. And okay, <laughs> so... PS1, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's face looks jack. <laughs> no one looks like a we, person. We gotta put up uh, so, <laughs> PS1 Hagrid's yes. photo yeah, here. PS1 Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> so they take off his mask, and you can hear Meryl is just like, <gasps> "Oh my goodness!" Yeah, I'm like this is gross. horrific. And yeah. the camera's avoiding showing his face. And I'm like, "Are they yeah. gonna show it? Are they gonna show it?" And then slowly the camera goes up and shows his face, and I'm like. He looks <laughs> like everyone else. He looks, he, looks he looks no worse than any. As jacked as anyone else's face <laughs> yes. in the game. <laughs> it is so funny. Oh my gosh, I just couldn't believe it. And I wonder, I wonder, I just wonder what they're, because they, they knew what this would look like, right? They knew uh, what yeah, they're probably the, the trying full resolution. Best. I Well, if you're playing this on a CRT back in the day, I mean, maybe... You might have some forgiveness there. Um, it wouldn't look quite as like pixelated. It would maybe no, blend a little but better. But it would still look like but everyone the, the else's face. The texture does have a line going through his forehead, like a sewn. I saw something like that, like a yeah, Frankenstein. Like, like, like a Frankenstein sort yeah. of like. Uh, there was a line. I couldn't tell what it was. It looked like a wrinkle. Yes. Like just eyebrow wrinkles. So in the Twin Snakes version, you get a much clearer view, right? Yeah. Let me actually just pull it up. I saw it. He does look a little oh, more. Oh, so you've seen I it. Did, I did. Okay. I it looks a little more Frankenstein-like. Yeah. He, basically, he's pale white. He's got these stitches going across his forehead here and here. And then up and down. He's yeah. got like a, it looks almost like an acid burn kind of like on his yeah. mouth. And he needs the you mask. Know? So, yeah. Yeah. He's supposed to look like, oh, man, he's jacked up. But totally. it's, it's hard yeah, to see PS1, that. In the PS1, you just don't get that. <laughs> it's and hard to see that when so, everyone's faces look yes. pretty messed up. <laughs> Once again, possible self-awareness issue of just being really funny and that the game designers aren't, or the game storytellers are not really connecting with what the audience is seeing. You yeah, know, it's just sure. like kind of laughing out loud funny. Yeah. Um, this is when he sees into Meryl's mind and sees Snake there. So seems the psychotherapy was totally ineffective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes after she I told us that she had psychotherapy. Yeah. We already went through that. Um, Mantis' last request is to put his mask back on so he can be left alone in his own world with no obtrusive thoughts oh, of Oh, because the mask keeps it keeps others' thoughts from permeating his mind, right? I'm not sure from if that's what the mask his does. Mind. Something like that. Maybe it does. Um, Where, yeah, I just know that he, he like wants that. to be left alone in his own mind. Yeah, so to die. it's almost like he can't help but read people's minds around if it's him. Not so on. he needs the mask, something like that, yeah. yeah. So with the mask on, he can just be alone and not, you know. 
And then he, then his, fi his dying words are, uh, this is the first time I've used my power to help someone. It's strange, it feels kind of nice. It feels kind right. of nice. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, his whole philosophy thing of like the atomistic desire to pass on your seeds and it's how jacked up it is and how messed up the world is. It's a lot of Nietzschean, Nietzschean oh, philosophy sure. there. Um, so I just wrote the word Nietzsche in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Nietzsche. Um, but just these, the idea. These games love loved Nietzsche, dude. Right. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I also wrote down the, this was back when Naomi was getting all jealous about how we like Meryl and we're saving her and she's like, why aren't you letting her die? Um, <laughs> I wrote down the drama unfolding during saving the world between Snake and all the girls is just amazing. This, <laughs> it's just so good. It really is so similar to, yeah. uh, well, both of our criticism, but particularly your criticism of Mass Effect. Mass Effect. It's so similar. Yes. It's like, this is not yeah. the time to have a, mm -hmm. a, a school playground like argument about who do you like yes. better, me or her. And all the people not talking to each other. Like, and, uh, yes. This is not the time for this. No, no, no. <laughs> and also, he's not the person. He's the commander of the. Yes. Of the Navy SEALs, you know? Like, he's not supposed <laughs> to be getting with the people, you know? It was worse in that Anyways. game than it is here, because the tones are different, but... Yes, exactly. It's, the sim it's a similar... This concept. game has a little more of a silly um, tendency to dip into the, the silliness, yeah. right? Um, oh, my gosh. So, Meryl gets upset about how she allowed Mantis to control her mind. She's, like, all down on herself. And um, Snake's like, stop that. Like, you cannot doubt yourself for a second on the battlefield. Like, cut it out. You know, like yes. if you're gonna you're gonna do this, then like move on. Yeah, he's really really harsh about it. He's pushing her hard, and she's like, "You're right, you're right." So she wants to talk to him about what Mantis saw in her mind regarding him, um, about like what he said. He's like, "What's wrong now?" Like, <laughs> and she's <laughs> yeah. like, "Okay, never mind." Never like, you mind. Can, uh, uh, I won't say it. And then she tries to get to know him better. Do you have a family? No, but I was raised by many people. Like. What's your real name? I don't have a real name. Or when names yeah. aren't, don't matter on the battlefield. Yes, of course. He's so uh, just typical. I love it. And then like, love it, um, love it, love it. you know, uh, do you, is there anyone that you like? It's like, I don't like to get involved. Like, no. People just complicate yeah, my life. Yeah, other people just complicate my life. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good And stuff. so she just, uh, so you really are alone, like you said. You're just yeah. a sad, lonely man. I put here, at this point, the flirting is over. Yeah. Like, he's no longer... His sex appeal wore off. Yes, it was, yes. <laughs> well, and I now, guess it didn't hit exactly, because she still likes him. Not the appeal, but his his fun desire to flirt with girls is yeah. just not there anymore. Yeah. So, um, they move on from Oh, here. is this where she asks him what he does, and he says he, he rides dog sleds? That's, yeah, when they come around, because they hear dogs. They yeah, hear dogs that's right, he, he knows them. He's like, oh, this, is, like, a, this is, a, is a wolf dog. These kinds of animals, yeah, yeah. And he's like, how do you know so much? He's like, well, I have huskies like, and I am a musher, <clears throat> dog musher. Now, I hadn't, uh, when I first played the game, I didn't do the briefing at the beginning. Oh, okay, so you didn't I didn't know anything about dogs. I, I and, did, had, and this is my first game. huskies are his only family. I had <laughs> no freaking idea. And so I play the game, and all of a sudden, halfway through the game, it's I'm Snake, I ride dog sleds. I'm a musher. <laughs> <laughs> what? That came out of nowhere to me. I was like, what uh, in the world? Funny. He's a musher. First off, I, I, I questioned whether that was a real word or not. A Maybe musher, because they up. say mush, so mush. Yeah. So it's your uh, musher because okay. you say mush. Like, mm -hmm. is that real? I guess so. I don't know, I guess so. Um, but I thought that was pretty funny um, that I was being revealed at this point in the story that he's a musher for a dog sled team. Yeah. That's just great. So you have to sneak through this area with a bunch of like dogs and they'll like tear you up if you get too close. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you get to the other side, Meryl, the dogs like her. Oh yes, yeah, I've noticed that. And, yeah. and th uh, this, is, this is another aspect of Metal Gear Solid I really, really like. There's like multiple ways to solve problems. Oh uh, yes. So like when you have to backtrack through this area again, right, the dogs would attack you. If you've oh, done yeah. nothing. They don't mm. like Snake. They don't like his scent. Right. But what you can do is you can, like, smack Meryl. And if you do that, the dogs will, like, run after you. But if you have the cardboard box. Yes, And you go box. into it. Yes, exactly. Then the dog will come over and will pee on the box. And now <laughs> you have the scent of a dog. So when you're wearing the cardboard box and you're walking through the dogs, they'll like you. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's like... 
The, you know, or if you have the thermal goggles, or if you didn't, on this playthrough, I didn't have the thermal goggles, so I, oh, or yeah. the night vision goggles, or whatever it is that you need I had that, to be able to see you, through like, and through. like crawl through, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't have that. <laughs> so there's like multiple ways to get through here, or to go back through without taking damage, or fighting them, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, you could use like stun grenades, or... Yeah, grenades. There's like multiple ways to go about it. It's clever in how they come up with as many ways as possible to let the player kind of like handle it their own way. And this is also true of like the escape from the jail cell later. Oh yeah, There's yeah, multiple that's right. ways to get out of there, there's oh, not yeah. just one. Ooh. So like... That's cool. Again, I, I kind of, this was one thought that I had as I was doing my playthrough this last week, like, I miss this in the AAA space. Mm. Not that this is necessarily a AAA game, that a term I don't even think existed at the time. Oh, yeah. But Konami and Nintendo, these were the bigger names in gaming at the time, mm -hmm. in terms of publishers. And so Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, I think, can be put into the same category as some of the, you know, the highest quality... What would be considered, you know, yeah. ...games of the time. So yeah, I'm yeah. classifying it as AAA for that reason. Right. Not that it had the budget of what would be equivalent to a modern right. AAA game. I understand that. Gotcha. My point is, they were... They tried, I feel like, in this time to be so much more clever and out of the box with their game design. Yeah. And you don't see that as much anymore because there's so no. there's not a lot of risk taking. Right, right. Yeah, it's that's like, true. That's we true. We know that these gameplay mechanics are popular in these games, so we're gonna poach those and make this amalgamation that is action RPG shooter open world you exploration. Know who did that really well was near. Yeah. Oh, tons of different gameplay things happening within the same yeah, game. It, it, it's a that's risk, a game though. that took a ton of risks. Yeah, tons of risks. Yeah. But it also wasn't a triple A game. Exactly. It's that's more true. like it was that's more like double A. I see what you mean. Yeah. So the triple A's, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So like, that's you true. know, it, it, it felt like, and this was kind of my thought I was coming around to. Why was it that, for us growing up in this time, you know, we felt that these games were these masterpiece gems. I, I feel like a lot of it was because the industry wasn't as big. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of these creators, you know, they were willing to take risks because the amount of money going into producing this was not as astronomically high as it is now. And mm -hmm. you don't have a board of directors sitting up here to being like, this has to make this much profit. Yeah. And our investors have to, you know, in order to please them. Like, this was a time before games were big enough to be in the real business world. Yeah. Why, well, as was mentioned before with Kojima, yeah. Konami was the only listed on the stock exchange yeah. game company yes. when he was looking for games. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it wasn't like that. That's so they true. weren't trying to please advance investors yeah. when they were making games. Yeah. So they were willing to try all this crazy stuff. I miss all that in games too. All this crazy mechanics and like let's, let's think way out of the box and like do something different. Yeah. And that's why a lot of games that came out at that time started these mega franchises that we have now because they were so unique. You'd never seen anything like it before. That's true, yeah. And Metal, that's why Metal Gear Solid is so special. Hmm. Because of this kind of stuff. It was just like that's... And, and your well, buddy probably didn't do that at I school. I know. And, and you'd be like, dude. Probably didn't even know it was possible. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's awesome. It's that, just I think awesome. that's cool. Do, do, uh, you've played some of the later games, Metal Gear Solid yes. 4 and 5. Do they still do this kind of fun uh, Hideo stuff? Hideo Kojima became, I think, a powerful enough voice in Konami for a long time okay. to be able to continue risk-taking and trying to you know, cool. do his wacky stuff. But obviously that came to a head. At some point in Kojima and Konami had a really bad divorce. Yeah, yeah. So he had to go do Death Stranding, which yeah. continues kind of in that vein. Right, doing of different. doing something different. Yeah, yeah. But he had to have like Sony's backing, but it's because he's Kojima. Yes. It's because he's Hideo Kojima. Yeah, yeah. You know, me or any other person who, who were just to get started in the industry today, they're not going to get that level of trust. No, you'd, unless you're just indie. That's the only way to do yeah. it. Yeah, if you're so, actually hired on at these companies, yeah, it's not going to happen. So yeah. anyway, it's just, I don't know, it's just, there was a thought that I had while playing this. It was like, you just don't see big games of today taking the same chances. It's almost like they don't want that to happen because w it's wasted time developing options for things that most players won't do. Yes. And so they're like, just cut it. Just yes. Cut. Yeah, yeah the, like the time, resources, whatever, into building that to go in there yeah. is not worth it if it's not going to increase our 
profits by this much. Like, they say, oh, well, you want to do that? Oh, well, look, we'll make a DLC after the game and we'll patch sure. something in. Like, if, okay, it, if it's successful not, and yeah, yeah. merits more yeah. DLC or something. Anyway, it's just the industry has changed a lot. Yep. And I, I don't know. I just got the sense I really missed when games were this way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they, me too. They really tried hard to be unique instead of just copy all the successful stuff into, I don't even know, like it's almost like their games are genreless. Oh, AAA yeah. games today are, it's they're like just it's a shooter, movies. but it's also a freaking RPG because it's got all these RPG elements. And it's yeah. also an open world game and it's also a stealth game and it's also this. It's yes. like they just put everything into one thing now. But, because, but not in the way that, yeah. No, yeah, and, and it starts to feel like open world games, like I'm starting to get to a point where it's like, dude, I have done this yeah. a thousand times. I yep. cannot do another stealth mission where I hide in the tall grass again. <laughs> I just can't do it again. Yeah. I can't. It's so boring now. Yeah. Like that's how I felt when, uh, as, as, as impressive as Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, or yeah. Horizon Zero, what's the second? New Horizons. New Horizons. Yeah. West, Forbidden oh, West. Forbidden West. Sorry, my bad. So I, I really liked Horizon Zero Dawn. I, I, know, I, I think that Horizon Forbidden West is an impressive game in, on many fronts. Yeah. But I, as soon as I was doing tall grass sneaking between again, it was just like, dude, I, I, I can't do this. I feel like Ghost of Tsushima was like the last oh, straw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I like Ghost of Tsushima, yeah. but at the end of that, I remember thinking, I don't think I can play an open world game like this again. Yeah, yeah. I've done it too many times. Like, <laughs> Assassin's Creed beat this into the freaking dust. Yeah. And, like, this executed better than those games in a lot of ways. The the dueling was cool. Oh, yeah. But, super. like, I can't, I can't do this go to waypoint discover new place and how long it takes ten and more yeah, yeah. you know defeat the fortress and have like a bunch of stuff open up on the map thing again i just can't do it yeah. again it's cool <laughs> if it's like your only game and you yes. want to do everything in it and it's you like <laughs> it to be massive and explore all the nooks and crannies but um too many games becoming that it just makes the games take a very yeah. long time yeah and it's like just warp me to the next region like yeah. i don't yeah I, I, i'm with you anyway I was so impressed and I just enjoyed so much how unique this game feels. It's like there's nothing else like Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. There's nothing else like this. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's really cool. It's so unique to itself. Okay, now we get to the Sniper yeah. Wolf. So battle. we get to the spot, we're just chilling, and she gets, Meryl gets she shot. Gets Re really bad. Up, so <laughs> she, she shot three times. Three, like, like <laughs> once it seemed like in the pelvis, once in the, in leg, the leg and once in, in the, the arm. arm. Now, high-powered rifle rounds, it's not the, just like a boop, oh, there's a hole in my arm the size of the bullet, you know. Like <clears throat> rips. It shreds you, dude, it shreds you. A high-powered rifle round will go through you and will ripple through your muscles and yeah. even there's like a ripple effect that just like, just shreds your muscles to pieces. So, this is ridiculous, <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> That she's even alive, much less capable of doing anything after this point. But, yeah. you know, it's a game, so whatever. It just, for some reason, at this portion of the game, I really thought she was dead. Yeah. Right away. I was like, oh my gosh, they went for it. They killed her. Meryl's dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that bullet killed Meryl. Like, for sure. And now she's not dead, and she's like trying to reach for her gun and yeah. stuff. And she's like, oh, help me. And this is echoes of, you know, a lot of war films and stuff. And, sure. But, like... You get shot by a high-powered rifle like that, and it is not pretty. It it, no. it messes you up, and so she gets not shot three again. times. Yeah, she can't move, and it's basically it's it, there's a sniper trap. Uh, they've talked about this a few times, and um, I think Saving Private Ryan has this, and uh, Enemy at the Gates. Have you ever seen that one with Jude Law? Oh no, and oh, it's a great movie. Um, but it's like a sniper battle, right? But one of the tactics a sniper will use is they will injure somebody on purpose, but not kill them right away to draw out people to help that person and then pick mm. off the people who come out to help one by one yes. because nobody can bear to see their friend like dying yes. on the ground. That's, and then that's just boom, Wolf you kill doing. like yeah. seven people, you know, before finally they say, okay, we have to let them die slowly and we can't get them. Um, so that's what's happening here. And Campbell comes on uh, to explain it, I think. I think it's Campbell. Yep. Who says, hey, He's luring you out. Don't go help her. But this is his nephew, his, uh, his niece. niece. I yeah. think it's him who says that. I'm pretty yes. sure it was him. Campbell does um, say this. And so, yeah, it's like, hey, we need to counter snipe, right? So we've got to go find a sniper rifle somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but the whole, the whole like, 
like strategy here is to draw us out and then shoot us as well. Yeah. Did you did you did you do an attempt to go out and see what happens? Because I didn't. No, but I think she would just shoot you. And and My I think, guess is I think you just at die. this point you just die as soon as you're shot. I, but I don't know that for sure. I don't know if my life was low when I attempted yeah. it or if you're gonna die in one shot if you haven't gone back to get the sniper hmm. rifle again. I, I didn't even try, that. but now I'm thinking, I wonder. But I doubt that you could actually save her anyways, so. Yeah. So anyways, she's looking to get her gun or she's actually telling, she's telling Snake to shoot her. She's saying, yes. kill me yes. just to be done with it and then go on and save the world. I guess I didn't have what it took to be a soldier after all yes, kind of thing. So that, just kill me and thing. be done. War is ugly. Yeah. What was I thinking? And Snake is just like, no, I'm going to save you. And Naomi's yeah. like, why are you... S- <laughs> Once again, the drama shows back up. Why? Why Do you like her or something? <laughs> because I thought you liked me. So um, she comes back on. And she, But she's like, she seems pretty somber about it. Where she's she, like shocked. She actually says... Yeah. You have the genes of a soldier, yes. not a savior. Yes. So why are you trying to save he's her? Like, because she's obsessed with like genes, genes dictating yeah. the type of person. Yeah, you the are. genes are supposed to be predictive. It's the the scientific yeah. idea. The idea behind genes is that they have predictive power, and they w- the predictive power means that it's a deterministic universe, and what happens here will happen, and whatever. It's how you do science. And so she's trying to use her scientific gene knowledge on snake and it's not working. It's not producing the effects that the predicted effects. Her yeah, hypothesis right. is incorrect. Right. And he's like proving her wrong in real time. But her her jealousy is kind of having a different tone here. She seems to be a lot quieter and will will answer back and be like, "We're going to save her no matter what it takes." And Naomi's just like kind of silent now. Like she's mm. like she's dumbfounded. She's not even mad anymore. She's just like not even curious. What's the word? She seems just more like I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but she seems more somber about yeah, the whole thing. It, she's maybe questioning, to some degree, you know, how predictive genes yes. actually are. Are genes almost. the real predictive power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Because you shouldn't be doing oh, this. this. You have the snake. genes of a soldier, not yeah. a savior. And then Snake says, I don't know what my genes look like, <laughs> and I don't care. I operate on instinct. <laughs> So, Which it, are your genes? It's, oh, that's true, actually. <laughs> that's true. That's nature. Instinct is nature. 100% genes. Okay. Well, that's funny. I didn't realize that at the time. That's hilarious. So you don't operate on instinct because that is your genes in control. You operate on your mind that is has control over the genes, over your instinct. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so Snake doesn't know what he's talking about, yeah. but nonetheless... Well, he says, I'm going to save her for myself, not for anyone else. Yes, I'm going to save her. Yeah. for Campbell. That's right, that's right. Thing, right. Yeah, I'll save her for myself, yeah. So that's very thematic for the game. It's non-deterministic. Yeah. This yeah. game is preaching a non-deterministic message. So he runs back. You've got to backtrack pretty far to get a gun. Yes. Well, I guess not um, really that far. But, but it's, it's several areas. When you gotta go past the wolves is again. It's dying that from far. shredded muscles yes. of a high-powered sniper. Yes, exactly. Bullet. It's a long time yeah. when you're. That's a long time. That's what you're trying to hurry to save. Yes. You gotta go pretty far back to get a gun. Yep. But actually, you actually it is really far enough. I think. I remember more or less the go, beginning of the you game. You gotta go all the way back through the snow to field where we first fought Vulcan area. Raven. Yes. All the way back, back to the first building and then into the basement of that building. Yes. To, to get, get the it. sniper rifle inside of like it's those rooms far. that were like down near where the uh, the president of Arms Tech was at. Yeah, yeah. It's like really far. It's almost the beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah. And they, my whole point is you have to go past the wolves. Like that's like the important yes. part. So and um, then come back again, and then come back, and she's gone. The blood stain is there, but she yep. is no longer there. And so you get we don't into know what a sniper battle yeah. with. Uh, how, how did you feel about this boss fight? It's interesting. It reminds me of Mission Impossible sixty four a little bit, actually. <laughs> you, remember, game, you remember that the game? Sniping mission. Yes, the oh sniping my gosh, mission. That was oh, so it's, it's classic. Stupid. Because and then especially the boss at the end of the sniping <laughs> mission. This is the same year though. I think it came out in ninety six. Oh my god. Maybe later. Maybe later. If you maybe. if you guys have not played this game, oh, this Mission total Impossible sixty four. I think is they also had the gold. same game on PlayStation, but. I think the 64 version was the one most people probably yeah. played. Because okay. the game was not good. It is it's not a good game. It is not. <laughs> There's a mission. But, oh, man. Where you're, you're at, trying, like, a train station, You're right? at a train station, yeah. and you're trying to protect somebody. I can't remember. It's the girl it's, or something yes, like that. Yes, it's basically an escort mission, except you're a sniper. Except you're sniping. Yeah. In a public train station, and guys will run up to her and pull and a gun out to shoot hand, her. Yes. And blank. then you've got to snipe them yes. before they shoot her. 
However, sometimes a Civilians? girl is just <laughs> pulling out her lipstick, and then but she's like all secretive about it, and then oop, lipstick, and then a mirror, and she's doing makeup, and then another guy's secretive, and oh, it's a it's newspaper just, or his cell phone, <laughs> or, a phone. or something like that. The, yeah, the, maybe the, back then. It's not even just that they're doing that; they run, yeah, up they run to up her, and then they directly stand in front of her, go like this, yeah. and then pull out a cell phone. <laughs> It's, it's like, great. Dude, and if you shoot the civilians, the then fetch. mission over. Yes. You didn't do it right. Oh, it's so dumb. You basically have to memorize who is an actual <laughs> bad guy and who isn't, and you have to redo the mission a hundred times. Oh my it was gosh. a pain in the butt. Okay, so quick correction here. I think the part that Kaysen is about to describe here in just a second on the podcast, it's not from Mission Impossible 64. Um, that that part he's about to describe here in just a second does not happen in that game. I think he might be referring to the final level in Goldeneye when you're chasing Trevelyan around and shooting at him and he's, you know, saying stuff like, you know, you're always loyal to the mission, never to your friends. And it's just like ridiculous how many times you got to like chase him around shooting him. So I think he may be describing this. Um... But in any case, it's kind of funny. It it, it kind of calls back to that time. You'll see it here. <laughs> he just keeps running away, and you just keep chasing him around and shooting him. I think this is what he's referring to, but anyway. But the enemy at the very end, it's so funny, because you don't even see your character. You're literally just a cursor on the yeah, screen. Right. You're just looking around. Um, the enemy at the end of that mission there, um, he's like, ha-ha, you know, he's running around trying to shoot back at you, and you're, like, sniping him. But it's... It feels funny because it's like you shoot them once and then they say something like, ha you won't get me next time, and you just shoot them again. And they're like, ha you'll never find me here. And then they hide and you just shoot them again. But that's kind of how I felt about this. <laughs> This particular mission, and maybe just, a little bit got, more I later on. I just got done talking <laughs> about how special games were in this time, and I have to also <laughs> add as a caveat to that, games were freaking stupid at this time, too. Also so were really bad. bad. <laughs> really bad, dude. And they had, like, the dumbest way of trying to, like, create oh, this abstraction of a sniper mission. Yes, yes. Oh, my lord, it's, it was so bad. It's pretty funny. Oh, it was jacked. But I get that feeling with Sniper Wolf here, because a real sniper battle is like you see the movie Enemy at the Gates. Like It's like that. It's like really hard to find out where they are. You find out where they are. You go up to a better position. You gotta be really careful. It's all in like the prep. Mm -hmm. That, okay, you gotta be careful to not let anything glint off because they can see glints, right? So you don't open your scope thing all the way. You just open it halfway so that it shades it from the sun so that your scope doesn't glint because it's curved glass. Right. All that stuff. Right. It's That's a real sniper battle would be that kind of stuff and how you can stay hidden and how long you can stay in one place and just yeah. wait and not move a muscle. Yeah. And then that's, a, but when it comes to the video game, that's not fun. No. That's not cool. No. You know, you don't do that kind of thing. You don't spend time painting your face the color of the background, you know. And so... You just shoot and hit, and then she gets up and runs to a new place, and then you shoot, hit, and then no run to a new place. It's silly. It's silly yeah. and and funny. I don't know a better way to do it other than just one shot, but that's, I don't know. I don't know a better way to do it, honestly, uh, with the way that the game's constructed, but it seems just really funny. Yes. Um, Even more so later and on. And it can, I mean, w during the development research we were talking about, you know, um, they they were struggling to like how do we control in 3D right they're still trying to figure this yeah, out yeah this was early on huh so like you know it's basically only in these moments I think there's also the is it the Nikita the launcher where you can control the missile oh yes yeah um, you can press triangle and go into first person mode oh, yeah. in those missiles too which I didn't know. That's cool. I didn't know that either. That's so cool. you can control it first person mode. That's pretty cool. Other than that, those two, the sniper and that, pretty much everything is like a third person top down yeah, perspective. Yeah. Um, and I know that they had been struggling with in integrating some kind of aiming into this game. In the Twin Snakes version, they do have that because they put that into Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, where okay. you can go into a first person mode and you oh, aim the yeah. gun, just the regular guns. Yeah, that's right? cool. That's cool. So they add that into the Twin Snakes version. Hmm. So I know that there was some problems with that, and it's a little janky on the on the D-pad trying to aim a sniper rifle in first person yeah. as she's moving. Seriously. It's not easy yeah. <laughs> to be precise this way, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what makes the battle tough. 
But there are some tricks to make it a little easier. Like she shoots you, and when it hits you, it really knocks you off. Yeah, it does. And, and he, it takes a long time to just like aim back and like get a track on her again, unless you exit. Exactly, you and exit and then jump back. And in. then you're like and looking you're straight again. Yeah, yeah. So there are ways you know, to make it not so difficult. But after I figured that out, it's actually not that. Tough. It's not that hard at all, actually. At that point. Yeah. Um, Sniper Wolf is voiced by a girl named Julie Monroe, but Not who, really. who voices <laughs> Julie Monroe, you might ask? It is a woman named Tasia Valenza. Mm, um, totally different. I don't know oh, why. Somebody, somebody in the comments last week did give the reason. This was something oh, I wanted good. to read. Oh, good. Please, please, please. Because it, it was a union thing. So I. Oh no! Way what? Hold on. That's so I watched I a Game Informer video that where they did a video with all of the voice actors. It was actually a really cool video. It was very, very interesting. Um, and it was for Game Informer a couple of years ago. And they got all these voice actors back. Mm. Um, and I was thinking that they were so going to mention it there, and they didn't. Now, if, would you belong to a union that forced you to name yourself something that's not your name? Yeah. I, you I'm, kind of... I'm exposure saying, and credit is really important. I'm saying that... As barely having skimmed over the okay, comments, so okay, maybe okay. I'm wrong. Let's see, let's see. Let's There's see. actually another comment I wanted to read real quick too, because I did read this, okay. but I forgot to mention it. So we talked about the Twin Snakes cutscenes being really over the top. Yeah, yeah. There have been some people saying, "Oh, Kojima wasn't involved in Twin Snakes," and some people saying yeah. other things. Here's here's the real thing: the guy who directed the cutscenes, his name yeah, for the Twin Snakes version, his name is. Kita, yeah. Kitamura. Do you hear Kitamura? Yeah. He's actually made some movies and stuff. Oh, sick. He's got kind of this. Um, what's that Japanese director who loves to do slow motion and cuts the same thing from three angles? Oh, well, there's the Mission Hong Impossible Kong, 2. the Hong Kong director Johnny Wu. John John Wu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of like that mm. uh, style of action director. Okay, yeah, that but was pretty big in East Asia at the time. When. He was making the cutscenes for Twin Snakes. He mm. tried to copy them exactly like the PS1 version. Oh. And Hideo Kojima came in and said, no, mm. redo them in your action style. Okay. So it was Kojima's call. Okay. But this dude is the one, is who, the one who actually did it. Huh. So just wanted to add that. Did that guy work on the later Metal Gear games as well? It's a good question. Let me actually click on his name and see what else he's done. Because if, if Kojima liked him enough yeah. to kind of let him have I, free reign then. I find it weird just in general that this was a GameCube exclusive game. Oh, it was exclusive? A remake. Twin Snakes. Oh, wow. That only came out on GameCube. Interesting. Which, when it was like one of the most popular on PlayStation, PlayStation. <laughs> games yeah. ever. I, well, it, I wonder, Konami, Konami may have been... Gosh, I wonder if Nintendo paid him a lot for that. Or if Konami was um, upset at Sony for some reason at the time. Yeah, so here's all the movies that he's directed. He's t directed a ton of movies. Um, but then video games. Basically just Twin Snakes, that's it. Wow, that's it. That's wow. the only video game he's ever so worked So they hired at. a dude and he, he didn't keep working for him. He did Lupin the Third in 2014. Crazy. Anyway, um, so that was one comment there. Um, the other comment about... Oh, about the voice. The voices. About Julie Monroe. Real quick while you're reading that. Julie Monroe voices Queen Ultimessia in Mobius Final Fantasy and in um, Dissidia. So, it's the yeah. same actress here. Oh, she was in Dissidia. Oh, yeah. And we were involved in the ad campaign for Final Fantasy Mobius. So we sure were. I bring that out, bring that up as a little connection. Um, here's something that I'm just going to tell you guys I'm going to bring up later. People have been in, um, telling me to read this article about Jeremy Blaustein and the, um, the liberties he took in the... Uh, translation oh, for yeah. the English version. I will talk about that, but we'll do it in maybe the final episode. So th that I'll bring okay. that up later. Good call. Um, somebody here is bringing up how they re-recorded the lines in Twin Snakes, and the reason for that being that the low budget of That's the original the union. game. That's union, yeah. <clears throat> um, was they, they were recording in a space where they could hear traffic noise, yes. and th they could cover that up with the compression in order to put the sound files onto the disc. 
but they couldn't hide that in the higher quality GameCube release, so right. they had to re-record some lines. I think um, um, David Hayter did an interview about that. Well, in Game Informer, the video that I watched, they talk about that. Yeah. And uh, the company, so Konami was going to pay the same whether they used the old files or, or whether they had them re-record it. It was going to cost the same amount of money because they were going to have to contract the same actors at the same rate, and the, uh, the unions would say, uh, hey, if you're gonna use their old stuff for something you didn't plan on, you have to compensate them for it if you're using their old voices in a new game. And so they said, well, f we'll just re-record then. So they mm. went ahead and re-recorded everything, and that's the reason why. Oh, and then two corrections to myself. Um, it's not the Council of Governments, COG, it's the continuity of governments. Oh, okay. Where you know, the president goes somewhere safe so that like he doesn't die yeah, and yeah. government can continue. It's like a contingency plan in the case of some sort of natural disaster yeah. or emergency situation. That's cool. Continuity That's cool. of governments, not council of governments. Hmm. And then uh, people are saying, um, oh, this one is coming from RMS Gray. While Asimov did indeed invent the three laws of robotics, they're not really such a big thing in modern AI research. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I even was like, I don't know if what I'm saying is BS <laughs> at the time I said it. Oh, well. Apparently it is. <laughs> and yes, correction to myself, I think I had said 1996 was the release of yeah, Metal Gear Solid. It actually is 98, which is what you said. Yeah, so that's yeah. another correction to myself. I don't know why I'm not seeing it. I guess we'll have to, maybe the guy will bring it up again next time. And we can just look for it in the comments of the next video. <laughs> okay. uh, where were we? So we kill Sniper Wolf. Well, we don't kill her. No. We, we defeat, defeat her. her but she then she disappears. As Snake is like walking in the next spot, three guards surround him. And then and they kind of Sniper Wolf comes in and it's like they have a conversation. They knock him out. He goes, he, he's they do. taken it. So this Sniper Wolf marks Snake with her, yeah, her nail? fingernail. Yeah. For, and she says... She's obsessed about one thing until she can kill him. Yep. She's going to be obsessed with him, right? Yeah. Uh, you'll all I'll think about until I kill you. This yep. scene was a little different, and it's one of the few times where I kind of liked the change in Twin Snakes. Oh, really? So in this version, he just gets surrounded by the three guys. He puts his hands up, and yeah. she's like, um, she says something about like, how do you want to die or when do you want to die? It's your call or whatever. And he's like, I'll die after I kill you. Right, He says sure, to her, sure. like there's some yeah. back and forth there. Yep. In the Twin Snakes <laughs> version, he gets surrounded by the three guys, but he does some like CQC to like take all of them out and like pull their guns onto them kind of a yeah. thing. And then she pulls her sniper on him and that's when he puts his hands up. Okay. So it's kind of cool because like the three <laughs> regular guards he just like disarms he, them and fights yeah. them. So he doesn't just gets, give up immediately. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Just, he gets caught by her, not by them. So I cool. thought that was kind of a cool change. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but anyways. Oh, and she talks about, uh, well, he, he mentions once again that she's a woman. Yes. He points it out. Oh, and she, she sa says uh, two-thirds of the greatest assassins in the world are yeah. women. Like, didn't you know? Yeah. And I don't know if that stat is correct, but I would imagine it is. Yeah. Because. They don't. Well, and a the lot of. doesn't expect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and women are very, women have more hiding places than men. <laughs> <laughs> in the words of Hideo Kojima. <laughs> so um, there's a, it would make sense that a woman yeah. is able to approach a high profile person and in a way that can result in that person's death. It's the femme fatale, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, which of this character is basically. She is. That's yep. what she is. That's her, that's her character. She says something later about women being better soldiers than men, just like naturally or something, um, when you fight her later. But oh Yeah, I don't remember that. Um, Okay, so he gets taken in. He gets knocked out. Yep. And, and then we wake is, up in like an operation room. Yeah. Right? Like with the lights and all this that. Is, Liquid's here. Liquid, Ocelot, and Sniper Wolf are all here. Yep. Um, so we get some pretty good exposition here from Liquid in his dialogue. So he explains that he wants no more accidents like with the DARPA chief. He says oh, this to Ocelot. Right. Like, yeah. don't screw up like you did with the DARPA chief. This ah, is where yes. this whole thing comes together. So we implying, go back to that. Implying that there was a mistake. Yeah. Um, we, we saw yeah, this we'll earlier. There was a flashback with Ocelot and Mantis and Liquid with DARPA chief on this same table. On the table, yeah. Where they were like, now we'll never get the code from the DARPA right. chief, right? And just after this in the cell, we're going to see Anderson's body again, but it's like decomposing. There's like maggots in it and stuff. Yeah. 
So the DARPA chief died, and they even mention in a Kodak conversation with Naomi, I think, that his blood seems to have been drained out. When we see him later on, yeah. Right. We so it's like right later. after the scene, I think. Yes. Um, so anyways, there's something going on here with the DARPA chief, but what we can infer is that the DARPA chief didn't actually give his code yeah. to, through the torture that was going on. Right. But when we talked to him in the cell, he said that he did. So there's a conflict there. Something mm -hmm. else was going on. Yep. And this is just another of the breadcrumbs being dropped along the way. But just, you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of terms and names and crazy stuff going on in this story. This might be something you would miss along the way. So keep in mind, there's still kind of an unresolved thing with Donald Anderson, the DARPA chief, and what really yeah. happened there. Um, but that's, that's what Liquid is referring to. He says, I don't want another incident like with the DARPA chief. He's saying, don't kill Solid Snake through your torture. <laughs> I don't want him dead yet, like you did with the DARPA chief. Um, okay, so Liquid then reveals his grudge against Snake because yeah. he stole everything good from him. Yeah, he says that he is our shadow, which yeah, means he in says turn, it directly. this is Carl Jung reference, right? Direct reference. I am your shadow, Snake, <laughs> and uh, that brings that means that we are he, we are also he, his shadow. I think he says that when you fight him in the helicopter later. But yes, he oh. says directly that I'm your shadow. I thought either way, I implied at the very beginning yes. that Liquid you said and Solid that back in the first or second. It's episode. where they're going with this, yes. right? They're opposites, but they're the same, right? So. Um, the light or dark, that whole thing. Um, so we're the ones, yeah, brother of light and dark. Brothers of light and dark. We're yeah. the ones who stole his birthright. So we've got a classic situation here, just like Remus and Romulus, Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, yep. and Osiris and Set. Yep. And um, once again, it's all about the DNA, because he starts talking about his, he, how he got all the recessive genes. Yes. But once again, we come to this. Who is the actor that plays Liquid Snake? His name is James Flinders. But who plays James Flinders, you ask? <laughs> Why, Cam Clark, of course. Cam Clark is the voice of Leonardo in the old uh, Teenage oh, yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah, show. Yep. Somebody mentioned that in the comments last week. Yeah. Um, so, once again, whatever's going on there. Something weird's going on there. But, mm. yeah, it's not James Flinders, just in case anyone looks him up. Yep. Okay, so... You know, he gets pissed at Snake for a second. Brother, light and dark, like you said. Yep. Um, and after all these years, the two have the chance to meet. Sniper Wolf, oh, he gets a call. Um, well, before that, Sniper Wolf asks Liquid if he wants a sample of Snake's DNA as well. And Liquid mm. says yes, that they're going to need it to correct the mutations in the genome soldiers. So the mm. genome soldiers have a problem with them, a mutation. Oh, that's true. They're like the whole army, right? Yep. Yeah. And so they, they need to fix that. That's why they want Big Boss's remains. Yeah. But they, he says, we'll also need some of Snake's DNA. But it's not enough. We also have to have Big Boss. It's not just yeah. Snake, but we're going to take a sample from him, and then we have to also get Big Boss's remains. Otherwise, we can't fix this problem. Um, so Liquid then confirms that both he and Snake He's not sure which one is the older or younger brother. But they are <laughs> the last surviving sons of Big Boss. Does he explain the whole process here? No, just that okay. they're the, the last surviving sons of Big Boss. Gotcha. Um, then he gets a call from Raven, informing him that the Americans are refusing to give in to the demands. Mm. So he's like, okay, we're going to move forward with the launch in 10 hours as planned. He has to make some preparations for that. Um, Liquid and Wolf then leave as Ocelot begins to torture Snake. Um, this yeah. this is pretty interesting because you have to mash the circle button to like oh, right. restore your life slowly as it's draining. Yeah. And if you're not fast enough, Snake will die, and you don't get to continue from this point. You have to go back to wherever you last saved, which might oh, have been yeah. before oh, the gosh. sniper wolf. No, fight I believe or Ocelot something. even mentions it. He yeah, mentions it says there's no continuing having not saved yeah, yeah in a long time and yeah little fourth wall so, break. So yes. You can submit at any time during this process yeah. by pressing select and say, I give in. But if you do, he says, the girl's life is mine. So if you submit, I'm going to kill Meryl. Hmm. 
Mm. But if you die, there's no continues. Can you survive the torture kind of a thing? So pretty interesting. Uh, you know, if you're good at mashing, there's there's like a yeah, certain there's muscle, a method like a twitch. Just, well, we do it. It's when you're playing guitar. <laughs> yes. If you're doing like a trim, what would you call it? Like uh, 16th notes or 24th yeah. notes. There's you a way basically to just like get it to go fast. Just vibrate your your, yeah. your arm right there and it just goes and you can do that on the button, you know. It's pretty yeah, easy, it's pretty I found, but... It is tiring because it's a long time and you got to repeat it like four times. Yeah. So by the end of that, my, my twitch muscle up in here that's oh, been falling yeah. back is like, like oh my gosh. on fire, right? Yeah, totally. Um, but then they take you to the cell. And I think we're going to stop there for now because we okay, got to gotta record another good. podcast for Patreon on the back of this for Undertale. For Undertale. So uh, we planned to go a little further this week. We didn't quite get to where we wanted to be. But... Um, I'll still put into the comments where to play up to for next time, and we'll just include the remainder of disc one at the beginning of next week. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We're in the belly of the beast section of the story. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's been caught. He's in jail. Yep. We'll see how he escapes next time. Um, till next week. Peace out.